Welcome, I'm Terry Tropid, and today I'm discussing coding for another operative report. First, let me introduce myself. I have a master's in healthcare administration informatics from the University of Maryland Global Campus and have RHIA and CCSP certifications. I'm also an AHIMA approved ICD-10 trainer. I've taught health information technology at Montgomery College for over 20 years. I've also written books on coding. I find that the guidelines in the um, code books are confusing, so I made these books as study guides to summarize the coding guidelines and put them into uh, regular English. My books include one on E&M coding, one on ICD-10-CM, and one on ICD-10-PCS. These are available on Amazon and updated every year. I have have updated the um, this one and this one, and I should have update of this one um, available hmm, December 2021. We shall see. Okay, so here is an overview of what we're going to discuss in this video. We're going to do step by step to code an operative report. And for each code we find, for diagnosis coding, we're going to look, are there any guidelines that apply? Are there any notes, any excludes one or excludes two notes that will affect how this is coded? Then we're going to look at the procedure coding. Are there any guidelines for this? And of course, which one in both cases is listed first? Here is the operative report we will be coding. This actually is much shorter than the ones typically seen, but in this YouTube environment, it's difficult to do a multi-page report. So here's the report. The patient, age 65, was prepped and draped in the usual sterile fashion. He was placed on the table in the lateral decubitus position. General endotracheal anesthesia was administered. We used a double lumen tube when we could, where we could selectively ventilate both lungs. The lesion had previously been biopsied, and we thought we were dealing with alveolar cell carcinoma of the upper lobe of the left lung. The man did have a past history of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma three years ago, but there is no evidence of recurrence. Being unable to advance through the left lung because of extensive malignant pleural effusion around the lung, we were unable to complete the procedure endoscopically. The procedure was then converted to an open technique and a successful total lobectomy of the left upper lung was performed. A temporary post-operative drain was placed. He tolerated the procedure well. Blood gases were satisfactory during clamping of the main stem bronchus and he seemed to be reacting well. We closed the chest in layers with Dexon pericostal sutures, approximated clips on the skin. Bronchial alveolar cell carcinoma was confirmed by pathology. Okay, so how do we approach this? We'll first go through it and look for words, important words that will help decide whether or not, um, will help decide what code is. Now, we don't care that the patient was 65. We don't care what kind of sutures were used to close the patient. We don't care, you know, the patient's race. A lot of this our sex, and a lot of the cases, we don't care about that. So what we need to do is pull out the words that will, you will need in order to select correct code. Okay, so what do you look for? Um, operative reports include a lot of information. You're gonna underline the words you need, so you don't have to keep reading the op report over and over again. So here's what you need to look for. Diagnoses, anything indicating a late effect, a sequelae, or residuals, or condition due to something else. If it's cancer, metastasis, primary, in situ, terms such as those. History of, status, status post, previous, whether something is acute or chronic. And if there are any symptoms in here, are these related to the diagnoses or are they independent? If it's related to the diagnosis, you're probably not going to list them. But if they're independent, you might list them because it could indicate some another problem. Uh, and for procedures, underline any words that indicate type, approach, or device. 
Now, your next question is how do you know what you'll need to select the code, particularly if you're a beginner? Well, this comes from practice. As you become more familiar with how the codes and the guidelines are put together, you'll be more familiar with what information you will need and you'll know more what to underline. Now, underline the words needed if possible. If you're taking a test online, be sure and have scratch paper next to you to jot down the words needed. You don't want to have to keep reading this uh, case over and over and over again. So let's go back to the op report. I have underlined the words we will need in order to select the correct codes. So what do we have? A VLR cell carcinoma upper lobe left lung. Past history of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma three years ago, no recurrence. Um, malignant pleural effusion around the lungs unable to complete the procedure endoscopically, converted to open procedure, total lobectomy, upper, left upper lung, temporary post-operative drain. So this is what we need. This is what we pull out of this. So here's what we have pulled out. Here's the diagnoses that are important. A VLR cell carcinoma, upper lobe, left lung, malignant pleural effusion personal history of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. That's all we need for that. For the procedures, endoscopic lobectomy was attempted, and then an open total lobectomy of the left upper lung was completed. Okay, so let's start with the diagnosis for alveolar cell carcinoma. Remember that in the beginning of the op report, it said, suspected, but at the end it says confirmed pathology, so you know that this is um, uh, confirmed. So what guidelines do we need for this? In the beginning of chapter two, it says if the histological term is documented, that term should be referenced first rather than going directly, going immediately to the neoplasm table in order to determine which column in the neoplasm table is appropriate. So in the alphabetic index, not in, in the neoplasm table, but the alphabetic index, find carcinoma of VLR cell, which refers you to neoplasm malignant lung. Remember, the alveoli are the um, um, air pockets in the lining of the lung. So now you're going, what this is saying, let me go back. What this is saying is uh, it's referring you to uh, neoplasm. When it says, see neoplasm, malignant lung. This is saying, it doesn't say it directly, but it should. It's saying, go to the neoplasm table. Okay, so it's referring you to the table. So you find here that it's malignant lung um, and then you go into the table for that. Okay, so we go to the neoplasm table and find neoplasm, lung, upper lobe, then column for malignant. We can assume that it's primary since it's not stated as secondary or in situ. So you can say this must be primary. And the column, the column for malignancy lists um, C31.1, and then there's this dash, and then another check mark with a box. Both mean you need additional digits. That's what it's trying to tell you. More digits are needed, very important. Remember that if you don't have all the digits listed in a code that are possible, the code is referred to it as invalid, but that just means it's wrong. So if you put down a code, you put down C34.1 by itself with no additional digits, it's wrong because there are additional digits that are needed. So let's look in the tabular list for this code. In front of the C34.1 is a box with a check mark and a fifth. So let me write that in. Little box, check mark, fifth. Excuse my lousy writing. So this will be in front of the code. That means you need additional codes and the total codes will be five. The total digits will be five. So 
It requires digits. You see an indented under there that there's possible digits 0, 1, or 2. So in this case, we're going to list 2 to indicate left upper lobe. So this is the final code. So what notes do we have? Um, lots and lots of notes. So under the category for uh, C34, there are important notes that will help you identify the correct code and any other possible additional codes. So under category C34, it says use additional code to identify, and it and both the things doing with um, uh, tobacco smoke, tobacco use, um, secondary exposure, exposure during perinatal period, et cetera. So, and it says, it's important to note there are these, but it's also important to note it says use additional code. So that means the C34 is first, and then one of these, if appropriate, if it's documented that the patient is um, uh, still smoking, for example, that you would use the um, Z code. Now, are they, who knows, but um, if it's not documented, you're not going to use it, that's the point. There's also an excludes one code, meaning that if the patient has one of these conditions, you're not going to um, use the C34 code, you're going to use the other code as listed here. So it's a, this excludes one, of course, is an either or. So also under um, C34, there is a tip. So the tips listed in there under category C34 when documented, assign code I31.3 for associated malignant pericardial effusion. If the sole reason for admission is to treat the effusion with no treatment of lung, malig lung malignancy rendered, code I31.3 may be sequenced first. So what does this mean? Well, this means that if a patient is being seen only for treatment of the effusion, you would do the effusion code first. If on the other hand, as in this case, the um, code, it, the um, um, neoplasm is treated, which it was because we did surgery, you would do the neoplasm first and then the I31 code second. So this is giving you good information about sequencing, which is very, very important in um, coding. Okay, so here's that the tip again. And so let's go to the I31.3 um, and see what we got there. There's an inclusion term that's not re related here. Excludes two acute pericardial effusion, so it's possible to do this code and this code, but that's not the case here. And again, it has the same tip it had previously to um, uh, for about sequencing, okay? Okay, so that takes care of the um, lung cancer, the carcinoma. So let's look at the next diagnosis. History of non-Hopkins uh, lymphoma. Now, this is a history of a patient with a history of cancer should generally get a diagnosis for that, even if it's uh, not recurrent, uh, but particularly when they have a current cancer diagnosis. So the patient has cancer now, the patient had cancer three years ago. There's no reoccurrence, but it means that there's a real susceptibility here. So in the alphabetic index, find um, history personal. Be sure that you're looking at personal history, not family history, very easy to um, get confused on. So this is personal history, lymphoma, parentheses, non-Hodgkin's, Z85.72, okay? So um, in the tabular list, find Z85.72, 
and that says personal history of other malignant neoplasms of lymphoid, hematopoietic, and related tissues, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. Okay, so are there any guidelines that um, uh, apply here? Well, yes, there are. Guidelines for Chapter 21, the Z codes, history of personal history codes explain a patient's past medical history, which no longer exists, no longer exists. Patient is not receiving any information. So you only use this code if the condition is a history of it no longer exists patient is not receiving any treatment for it. Okay, so that applies here. But if the patient, if there's been a recurrence or if it's still being treated, chemotherapy or whatever, then you can't use this Z code because it, this guideline would not apply. Now, there are many notes under category um, Z75, personal history of malignant neoplasm. So let's look at some of these. We have the same um, use additional codes here, okay? Um, it's also code first follow-up exam. So this didn't include a follow-up exam. That wasn't the point of the um, encounter, but if there'd been a follow-up exam to see if the uh, lymphoma had reoccurred, you would code Z05. On the use additional code for the alcohol use, and that um, is not um, applicable here, so we're not going to do that. Okay, so let's look at what diagnoses we have found. It's good to kind of take a look back, look at the words we've underlined, look at what we've got for diagnoses just to make sure that everything's covered. Okay, alveolar cell carcinoma, upper lobe of left, um, left lung. Yep. Met, uh, malignant pleural effusion. Yes. Personal history of non-Hopkins lymphoma. No evidence reoccurrence. Yes, that covers everything. But we're not done yet. The next question is what code is listed first? Section 2 in the front of your ICD-10 CM book provides guidelines on sequencing. Section 2, selection of principal diagnosis. So principal diagnosis is defined as that condition established after study to be chiefly responsible for occasioning the admission of the patient to the hospital. Why are they here? Okay. Are they here because of pleural effusion? No. Are they here because of the history of lymphoma? No. They're here because of the cancer because that's what's being treated. That's the focus of this visit. So that one will go first. Okay, so now we can go on to procedure coding. So the procedures are an attempted endoscopic lobectomy and then converted to open total lobectomy of the left upper lobe of the lung. This was surgery, surgery, so we know the first character is zero in the medical and surgery section. Wait a minute, do we code for the drain? Well, there's a guideline on that. There's a guideline on everything. Um, there's a guideline on that. So a temporary post-operative drain was placed. Materials such as sutures, ligatures, radiological markers, and temporary post-operative wound drains are considered integral to the performance of a procedure are not coded as device. So we're not going to do a drainage per se. This was kind of of the um, other procedure, the um, open lobectomy. So this is this guideline. So what about multiple procedures? We did two procedures here. Um, so there are guidelines about that too. B3.2, multiple procedures. During the same operative episode, multiple procedures are coded if the intended root operation is attempted using one approach and then converted to a different approach. Bingo. That's exactly what happened here. They tried it endoscopically, but it didn't work and, that's, and converted to an open procedure. Now, having that diagnosis for the effusion, that kind of helps explain why it had to be converted from endoscopic to um, 
open. So it kind of helps, helps tell the story. Remember with codes, we're telling a story. So here's another guideline that applies, discontinued or incomplete um, procedures. If the intended procedure is discontinued or otherwise not complete, code the procedure to the root operation performed. So you code, it was an attempted lobectomy, but that's not what was done. All they did was go in, look around saying, hey, there's too much effusion, we can't do it. And then the instruments were removed. If a procedure is discontinued before any other root operation is performed, code the root operation inspection of the body part of anatomical region inspected. So the endoscopic procedure was attempted, but no other procedure was done before it was just stopped, okay? Remember that this is what the um, op report said here. I want to get my, where's my pencil? There it is. Unable to complete this procedure endoscopically. So no definitive procedure is performed, so we're going to use inspection. So let's double check just to make sure inspection is what we want to do. Go to Appendix B, which defines all the root operation. Inspection is defined as visually or manually exploring a body part, meaning looking around. They're just looking around. So to code for the endoscopic procedure, look at the index for inspection, plural cavity. The effusion was described as plural. So in the index, find inspection, plural cavity, left, and that gives you this one. So be sure like, this is the pearl membrane and this is the pleural membrane. The yellow part in here is the pleural cavity and the effusion is in the pleural cavity. So if you go into the index, there are different entries for pleural cavity and for pleura. Now the pleural space, the pleural cavity is what allows the um, lungs to inflate during breathing. So this was the pleural cavity. So also uh, note that this is in the anatomical regions section, zero WJ. So let's go to zero WJ. So the index gives you 0WJB, so we're going to look at table 0WJ. This is anatomical regions general, okay? If you have a cavity or a region of the body, not one specific um, part of the anatomy, but a region, you're very likely to end up in the anatomical regions section, okay? So we end up with zero, medical and surgical, W, anatomical regions general, J, inspection, B, plural cavity left, four, percutaneous endoscopic, so it's an endoscope and there's no natural um, way to get to the plural cavity, so we have to go through the skin, Z, no device, Z, no qualifier. So the final code is zero, W, J, B, four, Z, Z. Okay, the lobectomy, we're gonna do the um, uh, open procedure next, the total lobectomy. Open total lobectomy of the left upper lobe of the lung. Now, there are some important guidelines for this. So let's look at this one first. It says, PCS contains specific body parts for anatomical subdivisions of a body part, such as lobes of the lung or liver and regions of the intestine. Resection, a specific body part is coded whenever all the body part is cut off or out rather than coding excision, I mean less specific body part. Okay, what does that mean? Well, there are different body part values for this one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So these are much more specific than just saying excision of lung or a portion of the lung, saying excision of the right lung 
cutting out portion of a body part is not as precise saying resection of the upper lobe of the right lung. And so it makes it much um, more specific that resection is cutting out all and excision is cutting out a portion. So there are body part characters for different parts of the lungs and here they are. C, D, F, G, J, and then you have right lung, left lung, both lungs. So these are very specific and these not so much. So using resection for a specific lobe rather than excision or portion of the whole lung because it's just more specific. So open lobectomy of the left upper lobe of the lung. In the index, now you might look up lobectomy. Be careful, the entry includes references to lobes in the nervous system, the endocrine system, the hepatobiliary system, and finally the respiratory system. And they refer you to excision for partial removal of the lung or the lobe. That's what it's referring you to. You're better off if you look up resection which is total lung upper lobe left, which refers you to zero BTG. Now, if you were doing excision, partial removal of a lobe, then you would use excision. But in this case, we're taking all of that upper left lobe, so we're going to use um, resection. So looking up um, resection, is better than looking up excision. Now, I get confused, get mixed up sometimes with excisions or resection, which is which. Remember, there's that Appendix B. That Appendix B will has everything you need. It will explain also when you go to the table, it tells you. It gives you at the top, you have, of course, um, these first three letters, right? And it gives you resection, but it also defines resection right there in the table. So it's a good idea to double check and make sure resection, that's total, right? Or excision, that's partial, right? Or whatever, to double check that um, definition because it's right there in the table, at the very top of the table. So we end the index census to zero BT. You have zero medical and surgical, B respiratory, T resection, G upper lung, globe left, zero open, Z no device, Z no qualifier. And this is what you have. Zero B, T, G, zero Z, Z. Okay, so again, let's look back and make sure that we have everything covered. Attempted lobectomy, open lobectomy. Okay, zero WJB4ZZ and zero BTG0ZZ. Now the next question, just like it was for diagnoses, is which procedure is listed first? So in your PCS book, there is a guideline, of course, um, for this. Guideline F, selection of principal procedure. Principal procedure is defined as a procedure performed for definitive treatment of principal or secondary diagnosis. Okay, so the lobectomy is the open procedure is the important one. The um, endoscopic one is it, you report it, but it's not the most important one. So you report the open code first and then the endoscopic inspection. Even though the inspection was done first, you still report that it's not in the order they were done, it's one which is the um, major treatment. Okay, so here is the operative report and the final codes. So we end up with these. These right here, we're going to um, do C34.12, C85.72, I31.3, 0BTG, 0ZZ, 0WJ94CZ. So all of this 
is condensed into these codes. Wow, that's a lot, and it took some time to come with these, come up with these codes. Remember that the more you code, the faster you get, so you'll be able to complete the steps more quickly, and the more you understand how things are put together, the easier it gets. So let's look at some notes you can make in your book. So as you go through coding things, highlight, underline, write in notes as you go. It'll make the process easier and faster over time. So anytime you refer to a guideline, make a note, and then next time it will be easier. So here's some suggestions. In your CM book, make a note at the beginning of the neoplasm table. If the documentation is histology, look up alphabetic index. Don't go directly to the neoplasm table, okay? Circle that tip under C34 about effusion. Go to Z85 and make a note, uh, personal history codes, no evidence of current disease, this monitoring. And then make a tab on that selection of principal diagnosis so you can go there and find out what you need. Okay, what about the PCS book? Well, there's some notes to make there too. You have that B6.1b about device. In B3, you have, we talked about a lot of important um, guidelines concerning um, root operations. So multiple procedures, discontinued procedures, specific body part, um, and that applies to many different areas like lobes of the liver, lobes of the lung, et cetera. And then you might make a note at guideline F. And then in the index, circle pleura and pleural cavities so you don't get the two mixed up. And for appendix B, go to uh, the definition of an inspection and write in, use only if no other procedure was performed. It's just looking around. If something else was performed using the same approach, you're not going to report it. Okay, that's the end of this video. If this was helpful, see the other operative report videos on this channel. And if you enjoy this video, be sure to hit the like button and click on my picture at the lower right hand side to subscribe. And I hope you enjoyed this. And thank you very much.